Oh, guys, today is uh, August the 23rd, uh, 2 a.m. We just left Charlottetown. We're on our way out for a trip of shrimp. Uh, we got a quarter and a half in area six, and this will be the last uh, trip to finish off that quarter. Uh, I'm going to do a little video. Uh, I had somebody ask me, actually, a couple of people to do a tour of the boat, and that's what I'm going to do come daylight. Uh, I'm going to take you uh, choice around, you know, all around the boat here anyway, and, uh, and just show you uh, where or home on water, I guess you would call this. <laughs> Spent a lot of time on this boat, and so I'll give you a good look around, and I hope you enjoy the video. Trawl is uh, back on the bottom there, and we're just towing roughly uh, uh, 2.1 knots there, uh, a little bit of toyed. Uh, the Brady Mariner, she's uh, 64 foot 11 inches, uh, 23 feet at the beam. And that's the rise part here, and she's uh, 95 gross tons. Uh, little plaque here. Uh, MV Fundy Leader, built by Annapolis Industries Limited, Annapolis Royal Nova Scotia as hull number one for Sherman M. Turner, Captain Sherman M. Turner, Q laid June 21st, 1988, launched January 31st, 1989. So initially this boat was called the Fundy Leader, she was built in Nova Scotia and uh, she was a wooden boat 
And then, I'm not sure what year, but the Ginges there uh, in the Straits, they bought her and uh, fiberglass there and made some changes to her. And we purchased her in 2007 and fished her in 2008. And we left the name as is. Usually, it's, you know, it's bad luck to change the name on a boat, so we left it as is. Uh, also, uh, Cody Rogers uh, sent me some pictures of the MV Fundy Leader when she was built there in Nova Scotia. So I'm going to add those pictures uh, to the end of the video if you. And uh, thanks, Cody, for sending them. So we'll start here with the wheelhouse. I guess I'll start over here. Uh, you know, this is the controls right here. Uh, I spent a lot of time here when we're at the crab, you know, because it has keep the boat position on the crab gear. And right here, this laptop here, uh, we has uh, sensors on the trowel, uh, like, you know, we, uh, to monitor uh, headline height, spread, uh, grid angle, things like that. But we don't actually have the, the sensors on the trowel right now. But when they are on the trowel, we use this laptop to uh, monitor the different info. And right here is a backup sounder. This here is a, a paper sounder, pretty much an antique. Years ago, an old man had a boat to Tammy Lee, and we used to love turning on an old paper sounder and watch, you know, dry, dry out the bottom. Uh, yeah, it's great though when you use a paper sounder, at least you get a record of what you went over. And right up here is just controls, uh, autopilot, rudder indicator, compass, controls, engine, ga uh, gauges. Uh, this is the main radar we use right here. Sounder. Uh, yeah. Well, in this laptop right here, we uh, has uh, the Max C program on there as backup. We use we got Noble Tech right here. The hard drive is down right there, so we're using the Noble Tech navigation program. Uh, we has cameras through the boat and the engine room and the last written stuff, and the back on the deck is down right now. The adapter is burned up. Uh, we are working to get that replaced. Uh, over here, this here is a VHF, but uh, it's also a hailer. This how communicate with the boys back on deck right there, and that's a nav tech. We get. Uh, Weather info and warnings true to that. And this is our GPS's, two GPS, VHF. We have one on channel six right here. Uh, air feed boats from 2J standby on channel six, 4R and 3K boats standby on channel 10. We also got another VHF over there on 16 at all times. And right here is our big set, uh, medium to high frequency. This one is used for longer distance communications. We don't use this one as much now because lots of times when you're talking back and forth between boats, most everyone got satellite phones now. And this is a radium. Uh, he's not connected to the bright, to the this unit here right now because uh, there's bad connection in there. So we just got directly to the antenna. This here is not uh, some ground new net. So and uh, yeah, television over there, printer and stuff. Radio, we got the satellite radio on there, you know, catch up on news and stuff or whatever, and listen to the music and control panels down there. So, anyway, just a quick look around at the wheelhouse. Down here is the kitchen. Just put on uh, some salt beef and onions, never come to a boil here yet. And the boys are uh, baking off some shrimp. Uh, I'm gonna stew those char here now for dinner. Took them in the freezer to the wall, go let them tie down a bit, then just let the onions and beef cook for a while, and we'll add those in a few potatoes at once. So, in the kitchen here, we got a, a four burner propane stove and oven, and the refrigerator and the freezer's right there, and microwave and coffee percolator, and sink and table. You know, uh, <laughs> I tell you, we have a lot of fine meals cooked up here, and in this kitchen, that's for sure. We eat well while we're out to sea. <laughs> we have this kitchen and down the forecastle. Here's where the bunks is too. Uh, we have seven bunks down there, two there, two right here, another one right there, and two right here. We only have three being used in here at the moment. And uh, this is my bunk here uh, uh, when I'm not captain, uh, first mate or whatever. But uh, looks like you and Trevor got a bit of gear thrown up there. <laughs> yeah. Now on the way in, the boys clean and right through. It gets a little messy while we're out to sea. Uh, little freezer there. Forecastle. You come on up. 
and just turn it, take a lift. And now this is the captain's room. Uh, immersion suit there, ready to grab at a moment's notice. Uh, you know, it's not real big, but uh, you know, close the door nice and quiet, uh, get a good rest, you know. Uh, TV there, I don't use it, not even plugged in, but you know, watch a movie or something. So it is the captain's room. And come out and hang a lift right here, and we'll be reading the bathroom, the sink. Shower style in there, so not real big, but uh, you know, uh, big enough to come in and get cleaned up or whatever. So, you know, it's not a real big boat, you know, we're living in our space. A little storage there for your, for your gear. Back out to the kitchen. And I'll do the rest after. Just look at that stewed char for supper. Well, between dinner and supper. <laughs> Eat when you're hungry on a boat. Just look, I'd be careful right now. I'm not wasting that. Taking back the trawl under now again. Looks like we got a few shrimp there. Hey, ready gear. Now, let's go back and see what we got here. So we got the shrimp winches and the box on her and all that will come off the fall then when we're finished with the shrimp. It starts off the spring uh, at the crab. And uh, oh, we got a squid there. Hook you up at once. <laughs> I won't bother to go down the hole. Uh, you can see we carry a lot of oysters, but we're at the shrimp. So, so I can't get down there, but the 
but the hole goes back to about right here. And then back beneath is the last rig down below there where the steering gear is too. It caps in there. And I think uh, I'm running out of space here on my chip. So I'm going a little bit quick up here now on top of shelter dick. This is a life rat. Ovatech seven person life rat. Trevor's there on uh, shift there right now, and I was gonna show you this. I brought these snowshoes on board, these all tore up, so uh, Randall refilled them for me. All ready to go again, and I got another old tore up here, probably bring those aboard next trip. Easy snowshoe repair. <laughs> and got some uh, Parmigan soup on there. CO2 tanks were used to uh, smother an engine on fire. Yep, I'm back here now. The boys are doing some work on the trowel on the way in here. There's some work on the grid. Now, up here on top of the shelter deck, this is their life raft. This is a whole tip. Seven man life raft. And you know, up here are just scanners and antenna controls for the boom with the boom hauled up there right now. And a little cramp pot we, we towed up, we'll bring that ashore. Spare bridles and grid here for the trial. So, anyway, guys, just a, just a quick look around. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I shot that uh, footage on over a three day period and just pieced it all together. Run right away in, we got another 45 miles to go, another 7 miles through the, the hole in the wall there, another couple hours then, so we'll be landing around, I don't know, 4 or 5 in the morning in Charlottetown. I think they're going to start offloading this at 7. Uh, yeah, the boys just cleaned their aisle up now, they do this every trip on the way in. They're all wiped over, you want to sweep her up or mop her off. But Trevor was just in, cleaning the bathroom, and Randall's cleaning up the galley. So, but yeah, I guess that's it for this video. No, I really uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I uh, hope to see you all on the next one. I'm sure we collect a bit of dirt over a few day period. <laughs>
cool is that? Slow in here now, get a real good look at this. Oh, hoo -hoo, how nice is that? Watch this one here and then he goes. Oh, yeah. Whoa, how cool is that? Look, we got dolphins here and. What a treat. 